might well call this short mock play of ours a posy made of weeds instead of flowers. Yet such have been presented to their noses. And there are such, I fear, who thought of roses. Would they were here to see this night, the stuff it is in which they took delight. Here, brisk and sipping robes for wit, like ball. Sometimes dull sense, but oftener, none at all. For changing rules of late, as if men writ in spite of reason, nature, art, or wit, our poets make us laugh at tragedy, and with their comedies do make us cry. Now, critics, do your worst. But here I'm met, for like a rook, I've hedged in my bet. If you approve, I shall assume the state of those high flyers whom I imitate. Uh, if I can get my skirt on. <laughs> and justly, too, for I will show you more <laughs> than ever they would show, let you know before. I will show not only the feats they do, but give you all the reasons for them, too. Some honor may to me from hence arise. Jeez. If by my endeavors you grow wise, and what you once so praised shall now despise, then I'll cry out, swell with poetic rage. Tis I, an actor, have reformed the stage. Oh, hurry! <laughs> Nay, prithee, let him alone. No, by the Lord, I'll have him. Here he 
caught him. Uh, sir, would you be so kind as to do a favor to this friend of mine? Why, sir, it is not within my small capacity to do favors, but receive them. Especially to a person that does wear the honorable title you are pleased to impose, sir, upon this sweet sir, your sir. Your humble servant, sir. But wilt thou do me a favor now? Uh, aye, sir, what is it? Uh, tell my friend here the meaning of your last play. Oh, the meaning? How so, the meaning? Do you mean the plot? Aye, aye, anything. Ah, oh, face, sir, the intrigue goes now quite out of my head, but I have another here in my pocket, which I may say is a virgin. <laughs> and I must say, it is pure wit. And though I say it, a better than my last, and you saw how well that took. In fine, it shall read and write and act and plot egad and pit and box and gallery with any other show in all of Europe. This morning is its last rehearsal, as it is to be acted. And if you two gentlemen would do the honor to see it in its virgin attire, although it may blush, I'd be pleased to reveal its nakedness unto you. I think it to this side. Uh, sir, I must admit I cannot answer you in this new way, but if you care to leave, I will follow you and... I hope my friend will do so as well. Aye, sir, I have no business so considerable that should keep you from your company. Ah, here it is. Oh, don't cry you mercy. This is my book of drama commonplaces, the mother of many other plays. The drama commonplaces? Uh, pray, what's that? Why, sir, some certain helps that we men of art find it convenient to make use of. Mm, how, sir, help for weeks? Aye, sir, that's my position. And I do hear there that no man the sun e'er shone upon has part sufficient to furnish out a work, except it be with the use of these my rules. Rules? <laughs> what rules are those? Why, sir, the first rule is the rule of transversion, or regular duplex, turning verse into prose, or prose into verse, alternative as you please. But how is this done by our rules, eh? Huh? None so easy when understood. Well, you see, I take a book in hand, at home or elsewhere, for tis all one. And if I find any wit in it, for there are few books but that I've none, I transverse it. If it be prose, I turn it into verse, although that takes some considerable amount of time. If it be verse, I put it into prose. <laughs> Me thinks, Mr. Bees, that putting verse into prose should be called transprosing. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, 
true humor in it. I stir pretty well. And how does Alma really do? Does not her armor become her? Oh, Edward. <laughs> now, gentlemen, here's a pretty conceit. What do you think I'll have her called an arm in this play? What, I pray? Why, sir, I'll call her Armorilis because of her Of 
I can just find a way to apply it. Let's hear it, I pray. Tis an illusion to love. So bore and sour when any storm is nigh. Snuff up and smell it gathering in the sky. Or beckon sow to trot in chestnut groves, and there consummate their unfinished clothes. Pensive in mud they wallow all alone, and snort and gruntle to each other's bones. Ah, what do you think of that, sir? Huh? Um, it is extraordinarily fine and very applicable to thunder and lightning, uh, for it speaks of storms. Yes. <laughs> I am the bold, un... Uh, pray, Mr. Cartwright, speak it out in a voice that thunders out indeed. I am the bold thunder! With a hoarse voice and louder. I am the bold thunder! I am the bold thunder! <laughs> the brisk lightning eye. Ah, nay, sir. Be a little more quick and new. The brisk lightning eye. Oh, that's my meaning. I am the bravest Hector of the sky. And I, the fair Helen, who made Hector die. <laughs> <laughs> and I strike men down. I fire the town. <laughs> Let the critics take heed how they rumble, for then begin I for to rumble. Well, let the ladies allow us their graces. Or I'll blast out the paint on your faces. <laughs> Come, gentlemen, let's have a pipe of tobacco with the meeting.